It is Monday, January 24th in the NBA, and I'm back with my two best picks of the day. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot. Let's get into a recap from yesterday. First off, this is our final day in the different scenery. I know there might be some background noises. We can't really control those things, but we're going to get after it. And yesterday, man, oh man, I wish I was at home and I had my captain hook because yesterday it was brutal. Jimmy Butler and Miles Bridges both finished on the under on their hooks. Oh, Miles Bridges finishes with 19 points. We needed 20. Jimmy Butler finishes with 20. We needed 21. A brutal day. D'Angelo Russell cashes with ease, though. Hopefully, you guys took D'Angelo Russell. They even told you maybe to sprinkle on that double double, which was probably great value, and he hit that as well. Still eight and two over our last four days, though. That hook is deadly these days, but I appreciate you guys for all tuning in. We could be 10 and 0 over the last four days, which is ridiculous, but still a great, great, great run. And we're gonna keep chugging through. If you are new to the call on our shot channel. What are you doing? Go down below, click that subscribe button. We just passed 21,000 subscribers. We appreciate you guys all for tuning into the videos every single morning. Today's, we have a, we don't have a great slate, but we're still gonna get into it. Only four games on the slate. I'll give you my two favorite picks, and we'll talk about the other two games because I'm gonna have a player in each of these two games. Let's hop into my best bit of the day. It's a man that's treated us nicely. I know you guys might want him, but maybe we'll talk about him in a second. We're going with Shea Gildas Alexander as my best bet of the day. We're taking his over 24 and a half points, minus 110 on FanDuel. Now look, Shea Gildas Alexander, last time we took him, he hit his under, and that was not what we wanted. We wanted him to hit his over, but what we got was a good amount of shot attempts, and we'll talk about that in a second. But today, he's on the OKC Thunder. Today, they're taking on the Bulls, who are coming off an embarrassing loss. They lost by 19 points to the worst team in the NBA the home Orlando Magic, which team is terrible, and they still lost by 19 points. DeMar DeRozan put up 40 points. I, I'm curious what the same game parlay of a 40-point DeMar DeRozan game and a loss would be. Now, that's inexcusable, and today they will be without Alex Caruso. Obviously, we're not going to talk about that, but and Lonzo Ball, both their two premier defenders for opposing point guards. That is exactly what Shea Gilgis Alexander is. Now, their defense is terrible without those two guys, and they have Vucevic down low, and yeah, well, Vucevic doesn't do a lot of rim protection. Anyone can get in there and score a free bucket, and that's what SGA is going to do because we obviously know he leads the league in drives per game at, I believe, 24 per game. Over SGA's last seven games, he scored 29, 29, 13, 34, 21, and 33, and 32. I believe that's seven. Yeah, hitting over in five of those seven games. Biggest thing, like I said, is the opportunity we're getting because he's attempted 18 plus field goal attempts in all seven games. He's clearly the number one scorer and really number two and number three scorer on this Thunder team. Over those seven games, averaging 20.6 field goal attempts per game. Obviously still a great guy that can get to that free throw line too. Attempting almost eight free throws a game. And this is a guy that's an 80% free throw shooter. So you're getting some easy points there. His last two games against the Bulls, he's one game, he scored 33 points, cashed the over. The other game, he scored scored only 21 points, but he only played 28 minutes. They were blown out, and they just, they, I think his plus minus like minus 36. So he didn't play the fourth quarter, which we obviously know is when they just look on SGA to score a ton. Now this game, the spread is two and a half points. I don't see it being a blowout, although Bulls just got blown out by the Orlando Magic, so what do I know? But still, over-under set at 214, which is still pretty high for an OKC Thunder game. I expect SGA to have to carry that offense, and I think he will do just that. He should be the highest, maybe one of the highest scorers in this game. Now, obviously, no Caruso, no Lonzo Ball. The SGA should absolutely feast, and Zach Levine might be back today, but spoiler, that's not going to really help your defense, So, and I don't really know if he does play, but we'll see with that. We're going with my best bit of the day, which is now on a 30-11 and 11 run over the past 41 picks. SGA over 24 and a half points. Lock it in. Now let's move on to the next game. Going to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Going to one of their players. Drum roll please. It's Evan Mobley over 15 and a half points. Minus 105 on DraftKings. Now look, I love Darius Garland. But I don't love this matchup for him today. It is against my New York Knicks. Wish I had my next pennant, but I wish I didn't actually. The Knicks absolutely stink. But still, the Knicks don't allow a ton of assists to opposing point guards. Now Garland is obviously the man. So maybe we add his play later on in the day. I think his best bet is scoring. His last game against the Knicks, he only scored, I think, like 15 or 16 points. Granted, that was Ricky Rubio day, because Ricky Rubio had like 37 points and 10 assists. So Rubio had a great game. So maybe we add Garland. I'm still waiting to see what Rajon Rondo's status is. If Rondo's out, we'll probably add Garland out of uh, just out of pure respect for him. But look, we're back to Mobley. Now, Mobley, he's obviously the, was the third overall pick in this most recent draft, and he's been better than I think any Cavs fan could have expected, and I think better than a lot of people, NBA fans expected him to be on the season. 39 games, averaging 15 points per game, 8 rebounds per game, and 2.6 assists per game on 12.1 field goal attempts and 51% shooting from the field. He could improve his field goal or his free throw percentage. I think that's around like 6, 70%, but still pretty decent for a rookie. His number's at 15 and a half, which his favorite number is 15 because this man has landed on 15 points on the hook in three of his last six games. So hopefully Mobley can treat us well and get to 16 and I think he can do just that as today they're taking on 
Um, they're taking the Cleveland Cavaliers will be taking on a pretty decent matchup, and obviously they're taking on the Knicks and Julius Randle stinks. But the main reason we're here is that Laurie Markkinen, the starting small forward for this Cavaliers team, is out. So that means likely we'll see more Dean Wade, maybe Chetty Osmond play a little bit more. But look, the last time these two teams, and that should be why Mobley will see a couple more attempts in this game. Now look, the last time they t took on the Knicks, Mobley had the highest scoring game in his career so far, even to date. He had 26 points in the Garden today. They're back at home, and I, th I don't necessarily I'm not asking for 26 points from him tonight, but I think he can duplicate that performance because Mobley, he's only he's played in seven games this season without marketing. All of those coming back in November. Spoiler, the game against the Knicks when he scored 26 was without Laurie Markkinen. And in those games, he's hit the over in five of them. Scored 19, 16, 19, 26, and 18. And then 11 and one in the two games he went under. The one point he went 0 for 11. So that was against the Celtics. He just got absolutely clamped up. But look, that 26-point that game was without Markkinen, was against the Knicks. And I think he'll be able to score against Randall. He can shoot right over him. And I know the Knicks have a solid defense, which is why we're not really banking on, you know, Garland to have a great day. And the over-under for this game is only 201 points. But still... I think Mobley can get done. The sharper, I mean, you look at it, it's, I like the play at minus 105 value. If it goes up to like minus 125, minus 135, probably don't think there's a total big edge on it, but sharper books have this over at minus 138. So if we're getting at minus 105, I like the difference in value there, a pretty good plus expected value bet. And so we can ride on Evan Mobley to get this over 15 and a half points. Don't really want to touch a lot of rebounds in this game. You never know what the Knicks, what the heck they're going to do. Mitchell Robinson, it'd be nice if he was out too. Now, those are my two official plays, but let's talk about the other games on the slate. Now, we obviously talked about Knicks Cavs and Bulls Thunder. So we'll talk about the other two games. First one, Pacers versus Pelicans, and this game stinks. It has got no Brandon Ingram, potentially no Devontae Graham. We obviously know the Pacers are without Brogdon, Turner, Sabonis, maybe even Levert too. I, and then all we have right now as of 8.01 a.m. is just Obviously, we only have spreads and over-unders, and I don't really want to touch this game. I think with no Brandon Ingram, the biggest beneficiary might be Herb Jones. In his last two games without Ingram, he did score 14 and 26 points. It's pretty good defensive teams in the Bucks and the Cavs, two teams with great interior defense, which is Herb Jones shoots some threes, but he likes to get to the rim and score in there more than, more often. A little bit of a softer matchup today against the Pacers. He might be able to do it against Gogo Go -Go Badase, but either way, this game could be ugly, and I don't think you really want any money tied up in a Pacers-Pelicans game minus basically any good player that a, nor a casual NBA fan would know, all those guys are out. So I'm not going to really touch that game too much. Now we move to the second game, Jazz versus Suns. On paper, a matchup of two of the best teams in the West, but the injuries have plagued both of these two teams. You look at the Jazz, they don't. They will have definitely no Devon, De no, no Donovan Mitchell. They might have no Bojan Bogdanovic, might have no Rudy Gobert, and they already are down to, uh, Hassan Whiteside as well. So it could be bare bones squad for them. Now you go to the other side, the Suns, without Cameron Payne, one of their sixth or seventh man off the bench, Jay Crowder, DeAndre Ayton might return today, but probably wouldn't count on it. Now, Booker, probably the only guy I'd bet on here, maybe even CP3 double-double, but still, the last two games against the Jazz, Booker scored 31 and 35 points. And look, this Suns team doesn't have a lot of guys that can shoot the ball, and Booker's been attempting a ton of shots, 21-plus attempts in four straight games, and he attempted 26 attempts last game. He did still go under, but still 26 attempts. Expect the Jazz to play a little bit faster without those two guys, well, without potentially Bogdanovich, and without uh, Donovan Mitchell. Maybe they're playing a little bit faster, and I think Booker can get it done, but... Trust me, I don't know if I want to bet on this game. So those are my two plays of the day. Maybe add Garland if we find out that Rajon Rondo is out. But we're going with SGA over 24.5 points and Evan Mobley over 15.5 points. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I know the video is a little bit scuffed, but we appreciate you guys for 21,000 subscribers. You guys have been killing the subscribe button. So we keep going up, up, up. We appreciate you guys all for showing the love and support and watching the daily videos. Had a decent weekend in the NFL, especially for player props. Spreads and over on guys stink in the NFL. But that's just how it is. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Talk about those NFL games. What... We'll talk with them on the podcast in two days, but man, those games were good. But I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'll be back in the normal spot tomorrow morning so you guys can get, you know, get acclimated. We appreciate you guys for tuning into the videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.